and blessed us highly. Amen. That's what it is. Bless us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. There's a future prayer in that. Amen. There's some people that's called to preach amongst them young people. Amen. And there's some people that's called to just flat out serve God outside of these four walls. Praise the Lord. And I'm thankful to be a part of their life. I appreciate the Lord for just allowing me to be a part of this plan. Amen. And it's our job, church, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as the church, not this building. This is just a building. This is four walls that's put together by man. It's not the church. Amen. The church is you. It's us. Amen. And it is our job to raise up a generation in the name of Jesus that's going to stand firm on the Word of God. Amen. And not just go with every doctrine of this world. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We've got some Bibles. Turn us back to the book of Hebrews. We're going to be in chapter 10 this, uh, this morning. Hebrews chapter 10. We're going to read verse 19. Amen. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. We've got James. Hebrews and then James. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 10. Read one verse. Amen. Amen. Verse 19. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want everybody that can and will be come, come to that, that uh, tent revival. I know it's a little dry. It's about 35 minutes from here. Amen. And I know it's a Thursday night. Most folks got to get up and go to work just like I do. Amen. But I feel like, you know, it's, there's going to be people there that are lost. Amen. And it's, it's more than just the preacher that was flowing out of this, but it, it needs to be the people that's there too to just sow those seeds in there. There's going to be uh, some, some of the guys from the City of Refuge and other, other ministries around that's coming to it. Amen. And I uh, just want you to be a part of that. You know, it's our job to be the church, and I can't stress that enough. You know, we can't just get comfortable on this pew and think we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. That's not what we're supposed to be doing. I talked to a pastor the other day. Amen. And he told me, he said, I tell every member that wants to be a part of our church, you can't be a member unless you're going to serve outside of this church. Amen. And that's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. We need to be serving God in any way that he wants us, whether it be cleaning a bathroom or, or, or serving in a minute, wherever it is, we just need to be serving God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So once you come and be a part of that, it'll start at 7 o'clock at Northside Bible Church. Amen. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. If you can, stand for the reading of God's Word this morning. You ain't got to if you don't want to, but I just feel like we need to reference God's Word. Amen. Verse 19 says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter in the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness, the holiest, by the blood of Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your many blessings. I thank you this morning for your powerful blood that was able to save our wretched souls, Lord God, and is still able to save today, Lord God. I pray, Lord Jesus, for each and every soul represented under the sound of my voice, Lord God, knowing, Lord Jesus, that we need you to till that foul ground up today so the seed of the Word of God would fall on that good ground and bring forth much fruit today. Lord, I just praise you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, once again, just thank you for allowing me to be a part of your plan today. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, knowing that I'm nothing, I'm nothing outside of you, that you anoint these old lips of clay to preach the message that you've laid on my heart, Lord God. Don't let me say anything outside of your, outside of your will today. And let everything be done to uplift and encourage, Lord Jesus, and strengthen each and every one of us. Help us leave stronger than we came in you today, Lord God. God. Help us leave on fire for you. Help us leave to want to be more faithful, to do more for you in the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, meet with us in the altars after the service, Lord God, after the preaching, and just do what only you can do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated all over the house of God in the presence of the Lord today. Praise the Lord. I want to preach to you on a subject that God dealt with my heart on this passage of Scripture as I read it this week. And the, the title, if I can title it, will be Enter In. Amen. Enter In. Praise God. And if, 
if you've read any 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 uh, any of the Old Testament, you know that there was a system that God had back in the Old Testament where that you had to bring an animal to the uh, to the temple and they had to take it in the holiest of holies and sacrifice it for whatever it is. There's all kind of offerings that you could give. There was all kind of uh, sacrifice, but that you had to depend on the priest, amen, to do these things. If you look at the, the, the scripture, you had to depend on the Levitical priest was the only one that could enter into the Holy of Holies in the temple. And if you look at the layout, the layout of the temple of God back in those times when Solomon built it, amen, there was a inner court, amen, that surrounded the temple, and then there was a porch right there on the front of it, and then you entered into the porch, and there was the holy place, and then beyond that, you, the, the, the priest would enter into the holiest of holy place, and that's where the sacrifice would either be consumed by fire by God, or it won't, depending on if God was sought, would, would, would accept the sacrifice, praise the Lord. But as I may mention, the Levitical priest was the only one that could enter in the holy of holies, amen? And I tell you this, if you read in the Old Testament, that, that there was there was, the, the, the Levitical priest that, that was assigned to that temple, if, if he wasn't in line with God, he would drop dead once he entered in the Holy of Holies. They would tie a rope on him, and if he died, they'd pull him up out of that thing, amen? But he was the only one that could enter in the Holy of Holies, amen? But when Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, amen, it, it, it done away with all that. Can you say amen? When Jesus Christ died for us on the cross, and shed his blood. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 27, it says, but when Jesus went to the cross, uh, behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. So when he shed his blood for us on the cross, amen, he, he done away with all that. We're able to enter in to the Holy of Holies, amen, by the blood of Jesus now. We don't have to depend on any priest, praise God. We don't have to depend on anything else but getting on our knees and getting real with God, amen, and we're able to enter in the Holy of Holies by the blood of Jesus. And that's what verse 9 tells us. It says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter in the holiness by the blood of Jesus, amen. It's by the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross that we don't have to depend on a priest. We can just enter in. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. We can just enter in the presence of God. Now, I don't know where they come up where you've got to get in this booth and you've got to say this and you ain't got to do this. And you ain't, that ain't what my Bible tells me. I ain't got to tell you nothing or anybody else because I'm covered under the blood of Jesus. I can go straight into the Holy of Holies, amen, and I can tell God what's bothering me. I can tell God what I got going on, amen, and I can enter into his presence, amen, and let him take care of it, praise the Lord. Amen. I can enter in by his blood. Now, there's a couple of different ways that we can enter in uh, the Holy of Holies. And prayer is one way that we can enter in, praise God. John chapter uh, chapter 14 and verse 13, the Bible, Jesus tells us, He said, And good whatsoever shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son, praise the Lord. He tells us that by the, the, son, the, the blood that He shed, then we're able to enter in and ask of anything in His name and that is going to glorify the Father, and He'll give it to us. Now, I want to tell you right now, He's not going to give you the winning number, the lottery numbers of the Powerball and some to millions of dollars. He's not going to do that. I'm sorry. I mean, I hate to break it to you, but that's just not what He's going to do. He's not going to give you the winning card to the bingo local hall down the road. He's not going to give you the winning hand at the blackjack table down there at that casino where if you're a Christian, I believe with all my heart you shouldn't be there anyway. Come on, somebody. Amen. But he's not going to give you these things, amen, because there are selfish desires behind those things. Can you say amen? 
He said he would give you anything that would glorify the Father. Amen. He would give you anything that's going to glorify his daddy in heaven. Come on, somebody. And you went in the lottery and got nothing to do with God. Come on now. You hit the jackpot down at the local bingo and got a thing to do with God. Amen. You going down there to the blackjack table and hit 21. Amen. And you got a thing to do with God. But he said if you need deliverance, come on somebody. Then he'd give it to you by entering in. He said if you need wisdom. Amen. He'd give it to you by entering in the holy of holies. Can you say amen? amen. He said he'd give us deliverance. If it's hindering us from being used of God, He will give it to us, praise the Lord. All we got to do is enter in the Holy of Holies in prayer and ask Him to help us, praise God. Amen. I have some things in my life, amen, that I had to get rid of to do what I'm doing right here today. Because I can tell you one thing, ain't nobody going to listen to me about talking about deliverance if I'm bound up by a cell phone, if I'm bound up by a cigarette, if I'm bound up by a can of snuff, if I'm bound up by a vape, if I'm bound up by drugs, ain't nobody going to listen to me tell them about deliverance if I'm still stuck in bondage myself, amen? So I had to enter in one night, praise the Lord, and say, God, I know that these things are hindering me from doing your will, praise God. And I want to tell you right now, he does exactly what his word says. He said, I came to set the captive free, praise God. And that's what he did. Because it was in God's will. And it glorified His name. Amen. Amen. We look over in the book of James and it'll tell us, even with wisdom, amen, we need to enter in, praise the Lord, to get wisdom. Amen. We need wisdom to get through this life. Praise God. Solomon, King Solomon asked, he said, I don't care whatever you, what, what, you don't have to give me nothing else but give me the wisdom that I need to govern your people. Praise God. Amen. We all know the story of the woman that brought the baby. Amen. They brought it in there and said, Solomon, this is my baby, but this woman says, and then, and then Solomon, he took the wisdom that God gave me and said, I'll tell you what we'll do. We're going to cut this baby in half and you take one piece and you take the other and then we'll settle all this. Amen. And the woman that was really the child of that, she said, no way, we'll just give him what she can have it. Amen. And Solomon gave that young man back to the mother because he had wisdom from God how to handle it. Amen. And we're going to go through situations in this life that we need the wisdom of God. Amen. To get us through. But the Bible says if any man or any woman lack wisdom, let him ask and he shall receive. Praise the Lord. And all we got to do is just enter into the Holy of Holies, amen, in our prayer closet, wherever that may be, and I promise you that God will give you the wisdom that you need to get through any situation, any circumstance that this life may bring you. We just got to enter in. Praise the Lord. We just got to enter in. Amen. Strength. Man, we're going to face things in this life, and there's people in this room right now have faced things that I've seen them. The only thing that got them through it was the hand of God. Amen. we got to have strength from God. Amen. I'm telling you right now, we're going to face things, and we're going to be up against things that we need to enter in and get the strength of God, amen, to get us through. But the only way we're going to get it is to pray and enter again. The Holy of Holies, praise the Lord. Amen. There's people out there in the streets right now that are gripping against everything that they can to get them through withdrawals and going through drugs and everything else. They just don't want to feel this way anymore. And I've been there. I'm telling you, it ain't nothing to play with. Amen. I'm telling you, I believe it's real because I went through it myself. It ain't in your mind. Amen. Your body is hungering for that. Amen. But I came to tell you this morning that there ain't nothing in this world that's going to get you through it. The only thing that's going to get you through those withdrawals is entering in the holy place of God by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And I tell you this right now, glory, hallelujah, still free you from it in the name of Jesus. He'll free you from it, praise God. 
I'll tell you, there's some times in this life where we're doing everything that we know to do, but it still ain't good enough. Y'all ain't never been there, huh? Where you just fighting tooth and nail to keep your head above water. You ain't really you ain't living in sin. You just you you working, you trying to raise a family, you doing this, and it seems like everything that every time you turn around, something's tearing up. This is going wrong. That's going wrong. The reason is, is God's trying to tell you, I want you to enter in so I can give you the strength that you need to overcome all this. Come on, somebody. All we gotta do is just enter in. Praise the Lord. Amen. We need to enter in to receive His faithfulness. Can you say amen? amen? And I say it, and I'm going to say it till I'm blue in the face. Coming to church three times a week is going to put faithfulness of God in your heart. Amen? Because when you're willing to give up everything else you've got in your life for God, amen. no matter how important it is to you, when you're willing to sacrifice that, He's putting something in your heart that's going to help you later on down the road. Amen? It's going to help you when you know you're being led of God and everybody else in your little circle is telling you to go the other way, but you have heard from God, amen, when you've been going to church three times a week for I don't know how many years and God's done it still in your heart, then when you hear from God, it don't matter what everybody else is doing, you still going to follow Him. Come on, somebody. That's what God's trying to show you, amen, by coming to His house and being faithful. It ain't about religion. I know that that new generation out there saying, well, you ain't got to do this, and you ain't got to do that, but well, God's telling you that, yes, you do have to do that, because in doing that, I'm putting something inside of you that's going to help you out in something else down the road. Old Pastor Shane ain't trying to just interrupt your busy life, amen, because we all busy, come on, somebody, we all got things going on. I'm sure if I left my church on Tuesday night, I'd have something else I'd have to do. But I made a point, even when I got saved, to put Jesus, not at the top, but in the center of everything that I do. And I guarantee you one thing, since I've done that, he ain't never led me astray, praise the Lord. The things that I don't do on Tuesday night, because I go to church, guess what? I didn't need them anyhow. Because God's more important. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, Noah, he knew a thing about God's faithfulness. I mean, it ain't never rained before. I know we can't grasp our head around that because it rains at a certain part of the season down here. Man, that front yard out there looks like a stinking lake, son. You got to walk on your tiptoes to keep your socks from getting wet. But it ain't never rained before. And here this man is, done hurt from God. Come on, somebody. He was hooked up. Amen. He knew the voice of God. And he heard from God, and God told him to build an ark for the saving of his family. Amen? Amen. And I don't know that there was five times in his life to where he was sitting there swinging that hammer, and here come old blood brother know-it-all walking down the road talking about, you fool! It ain't never rained before! And here you are, Swinging this hammer, building this big old heart, because you're thinking that it's going to rain so much that it's going to flood the earth. You're an idiot. Any of y'all been there before? I've had church people tell me, Brother Shane, that ain't what that means. But I'm telling you right now, the Holy Ghost showed me different. And I don't care what they say, I'm going to stand flat footed on the Word of God because I heard it from Him. Amen. But there ain't no doubt that Noah heard these people, and I know that there was plenty of times to where he entered in, amen, and said, God, I know that you're faithful 100% of the time, but I need you to instill something in me to keep me to swinging this hammer and living for you and doing the things that you told me to do, no matter what society says, no matter what the world says. I need you to instill me the faithfulness of you so I can continue on, amen, in my weakest point. When the devil tries to get in my head and tell me what I'm doing is not worth anything, I need you. Come on, somebody. I need your faithfulness, praise the Lord. And the only way that we're going to get that is getting on our knees and entering in the holy of holies by the blood of Jesus. That's the only way. Amen. Man, there's times when my wife calls me an idiot. And I am sometimes. I ain't going to lie. 
But I know I've heard from God. And just because he ain't revealed it to her yet, I'm not going to quit following him because of what she says. Amen? Come on, somebody. I'm just going to keep swinging that hammer. Amen? I'm going to keep swinging that hammer. Praise the Lord. Amen? Praise God. You know, I, I heard a story told one time. Brother Larry told it the other night at Bible study. He said, we need to get to a place in prayer to where we get on our knees and we visualize Jesus away from us. But we don't stop praying until we hold his hand. Praise God. And when we get to that place, we're entering in the Holy of Holies. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. The second way that we can do it is through our worship. Amen. Amen. The second way that we can do it is through our worship. Amen. And we need to get to that place. Every church service, we need to lay everything down. If we can't lay the stuff down that's outside this place for an hour and a half, two hours, and something is severely wrong with what is hindering us. Amen. Come on, somebody. Something is severely wrong and it is a stronghold in our life and to the point that it's getting in the way of us worshiping the one that created us. Amen. I won't even bring my cell phone in a church service, and I will this one, but I'll tell you the only reason I do it is because I want to know my wife is safe on the way here. But it gets shut off when she gets to this building, praise the Lord. And if we can't lay that down for an hour and a half or two hours, then I came to tell you right now, it has become a stronghold in your life. Amen? Amen. Because whatever's so important, it can wait. Amen. Can somebody say amen? amen? Man, Brother Daniel sent me a, 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 a message preached by a fellow the other day. Man, I'm telling you right now, he preached on that cell phone till he was blue in the face, and I had to hit my knees to start praying after I heard that message. Praise God. Because we all realize what we're doing, praise the Lord. We're taking away from our family, amen, by sitting there doing this, amen. We're taking away from supporting everything that's around us, from our children learning things from us. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. They didn't have them when I was a young man because my daddy got out in the yard and played ball with me, amen. He didn't have none of this right here. Praise the Lord that we didn't have them when I was growing up because mama showed me some stuff, amen. She wasn't in there doing all this. I'm telling you right now, that thing's from the devil. If ain't nobody ever said it, it is, praise God, because anything that you put in between your family or God is a sin. Amen. And I'm just as guilty as the next. Turn and sit there. Dang. Dang. I'm like, hold on, I gotta finish this right here. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, I just need to. Amen. 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 Well, he'll give us the strength to do these things. Yes. Just say, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We got to enter in in our worship. Praise the Lord. Every service we get here, we need to let everything that's distracting us to just get in. Because I'm telling you, when we get to that place to where it's just you and Him, some of y'all know what place I'm talking about. Some of you need to get in this altar until you do know what place I'm talking about. When we can get to that place to where it's just you and Him, and you ain't worried about this. And you ain't worried about that. Amen. When you can get to that place where it's just you and the Father, I came to tell you right now, praise God. When you can get to that place, praise the Lord, where the Spirit within you is having fellowship with the Heavenly Father that created everything, that's when things start happening, praise God. That's when true people are born again into the family of God. That's when people really get delivered, amen. That's when people really don't walk in Walmart the same. That's when people to really have things happen in their life. Amen. we got to get everything else out of the way and enter in, praise God. I came to tell you tonight, or this morning, fear cannot stand in the presence of an almighty God. Come on now. When you get to that place and you just worship in God, what you had in your mind, you was fearing, I'm telling you, it's got to go somewhere, praise the Lord. I remember when COVID first come up, Hey, man, every one of us is guilty of what I'm just to say. When it popped up, boy, we were scared to death, wasn't we? Yeah. We were scared, slapped to death to even go out to do anything, to touch anything, to do this, to do that, to do this. Everybody was. We didn't know. 
We didn't know what we know now. I know there's people that passed away and I got compassion on them. And when I say this every time, I'm telling you, God already knew it was going to happen before COVID ever was or ever will be. Amen. That was the, we can't pick the day that we're going to die. Amen. All that we can do is be ready when it gets here. Amen. But man, I remember when it first, about the first two weeks, I'm going to say, I was, I have my phone out there. It is, you know, strong, though. And Donald Trump being on there. And he's giving the new CDC report. I'm talking about every day I was on. I was like, Lord, I guess I mean here he is trying to, you know, let me shepherd his people and I want to do the most responsible thing that I can. So I'm looking at the numbers and and you know I'm seeing that it's growing every day. And you know, when the first one that kind of entered into George County, I was like, man, what are we going to do? You know, I know we need to go to church, but I'm telling you right now, if you ain't willing to admit it, I'll admit it for you. We need Jesus more than we need groceries. Come on, somebody. Amen. If we can go to Walmart, we can come to church. Praise God. Amen. And I was watching her and I was looking at it, and Trump would come on there and he said, well, we've been working on this and we're doing this and we got this going on and the numbers is getting up there. Man, I was getting overwhelmed with fear of what the people of God had got. God had trusted me with what was going to happen. But one day, Brother Marshall, I said, Lord, I need your help, praise God. I got to worship in Him. I got to enter in the holiest of holy place, praise the Lord. And He got rid of every bit of it. I said, I ain't shutting the door, praise God. We're going to continue to have church. I know we have video services, amen. But we opened them up and then when COVID come back around, backed up again, we ain't shutting the door, praise God, amen. Because I'm telling you, the Bible says, no, don't fear the one that can hurt you in this world, but fear the one that can send your soul to hell. Praise God. And when you get in the presence of God, fear don't have a chance. Amen. Anxiety don't have a chance in the presence of an Almighty God. You know, I know everybody wants to grab a hold of this medicine and, and that medicine because this doctor has got this. He's got it going on. He thinks he does anyhow. But, you know, I believe some people with a third grade education got more between their ears than, than some of these doctors out there. Amen. They want you to get on this. But I've seen people come off that and say, man, it ain't no fun. Come on, somebody. I've seen people come off anxiety medicine. It is a spirit that gets attached to you. Come on, somebody. It's a spirit. I believe it till I die and go to heaven. Amen. But I'm telling you something about anxiety. I saw a man come down to the altar at the city of refuge that was bound up by paranoid schizophrenia. He was ADD, ADHD. He was this, he was that. He had all these things going on with him. He come from the crazy hospital down to the city refuge taking 14 different medications, amen. But I'm telling you right now, the Holy Ghost got to move it one night. He stood up off that altar and he started praising God. He got up off of that altar, praised the Lord, and he never took another drop of that medicine as long as I've seen him praise God. Because anxiety, I paranoid schizophrenic, it cannot survive when you enter in the Holy of Holies. Come on, somebody. It can't stand it. I'm talking about he come in that place even on that medicine talking to people that wasn't even there. But when God got through with him, he was just like me and you. Come on, somebody. Because God's going to do what he's going to do. And he's going to prove every man is a liar. Come on, somebody. That says that medicine is the only way that you can get free from those spirits. When it's a spiritual problem, you've got to have a spiritual answer. And the Holy Ghost is the only one that can deliver you. Amen. But you've got to enter in. You've got to enter in, church. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I think I told some of y'all, I might even have said it while I was preaching, but about two months ago, I guess it was, I got to a place in my walk with God I've never been before. And it scared me. I mean, you know, I ain't never been a real responsible person anyhow. It's just free to know a little bit about it. Brother Marshall and all, I ain't really ever cared for a whole lot of people in my life to begin with. But here God has placed me in this position, amen, and entrusted me to shepherd people and, 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 you know, and, and it just kind of overwhelmed me. I mean, here I am getting pulled a hundred different ways at one time. 
And I'm not looking for no sympathy because I've got to take care of him. Amen. Amen. Or he did. Praise the Lord. But I just got to this place, man. I come in here. It was on a Friday evening. I done been at work. I mean, I've been feeling like this for a while, man. Just, 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 just reading the word just to read it. I mean, I wasn't even really getting anything out of it. Just, just was burnt, slapped out. I even told somebody about it. They was like, well, you just ain't got the faith that you need or whatever. You know what I mean? And I said, well, he don't know what I'm talking about. But I was burnt out. And I ain't never been to that place in my walk with God, amen. But I was burnt, slapped out. And I came to tell you, we serve a merciful God, amen. amen. We serve a God that forgives and he knows what we need before we even ask. And on that Friday evening, I had to go preach. I had to go to the refuge and preach a message, and I come in this place, and I just started giving God praise, and I started worshiping Him, Amen. and I started telling Him, God, I can't go do what You want me to do if I'm feeling the way that I'm feeling right now. Amen. I'm telling you right now, something supernatural took place in this chapel, and it was just me and Him. Praise God! Amen. I got up off of my knees. I wasn't feeling burnt out anymore. I entered into that sanctuary with the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. We had one of the best services we ever had, praise God. And he helped me, amen, because none of that can survive in the holy place, amen. None of that. Amen. But we got to enter in. Amen. we got to enter in in order to do that, praise the Lord. Amen. You know, the people of Israel... They depended on a priest to do all this stuff for them. And you know, I'm, I'm thankful that I was born on this side of the bloodline, amen. Yeah, amen. That I don't have to do that. I know that was God's design, but they had to depend on a priest to take their sacrifices to the Holy of Holies. And I want to tell you, if we do the same thing even now, we depend on other things other than God for our peace. Come on, somebody. We won't, we wish, there's a world full of people out there that depend on nicotine for the peace. Come on, somebody, because I was one of them for 15 years of my life. Amen? We depend on other things for our, our, our deliverance. You ought to see the line at the methadone clinic. You ought to see the people that's on suboxone now because the devil has deceived their mind into thinking if they get it from him, amen, they're no longer bound with the same spirit that's on nicotine, methamphetamine, methadone, suboxone is on the, it's the same spirit of addiction. And we got to sick in these things of the world, amen, instead of depending on God, praise the Lord. Amen. We, we, we seek it money for comfort and stability. When it can't do that, it can't, it, can't, it can't sustain you, praise the Lord. Amen. And I've told you this before. I thought if I got a good girl, that that would do it. I was at the hospital and we was down there with Sister Freddie's mom. And there were some people in the wake room and I got admitted. Was that your cousin that just, he's at the hump of the waterfront mission up there? Went through it a while back, been clean for a while. We got to talking. Brother, uh, brother, okay. We got to talking about it. And I said, "Yeah, I go up here to the refuge, and and uh, and I tell these guys, you know, I thought if I got a good girl, that she would she would keep me straight, but she turned out to be just as much the heathen as I was. And so this woman, she's fun, I like it. <laughs> she said, "He <"Hey>, you <laughs> but that's the truth. A relationship in this world, it don't matter if it's your spouse or not, cannot sustain you." I thought that if I got a good job, that would do it. But I'm going to tell you right now, that couldn't sustain me. And, and I say this all the time because people constantly do it. They, I even thought if I brought a youngin into this world, that would straighten me up. Because that's what people were telling me that didn't know God. Surely, Shane, if you have a youngin, that will straighten you up. And guess what? I drug that little blonde head girl for three years of hell on earth. Because of my stupid mistake. Amen. Thinking that the things of this world was going to sustain me. One day I ended in, and I met the man that has sustained me from that point forward. Amen. It's nothing else. I know it seems so important, and this seems this, and this seems that, but nothing outside of Jesus Christ is going to do that for you. Nothing. 
Nothing. But we've got to enter in. It's up to us to do that. Praise the Lord. I'm close. Come on up here. Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible says that the Lord inhabits our praises. But if we don't praise Him, He can't inhabit it. It is beside me that some people come to church and just sit down the whole time. What they going to do when they get to heaven? Because that's all we're going to be doing is worshiping God when we get there. Come on now. It don't matter if the song's all key and we got some good singers here, but I've been in places where it is. It don't matter nothing about that. It don't matter if they're good or if they're right. It don't matter nothing about that. Amen. It's about you getting to that place where it's just you and Him. And entering in. Because he said he inhabits the praises of his people. And that means that he dwells in your worship. He dwells in your praise. And there ain't got to be a song playing. Amen. I've been on my way to work. I've been praising and praise the Lord. And the spirit of living God be so thick in that car. You can cut it with a knife. Amen. And a song playing on the radio. Praise God. Because it's all about us entering in. The Bible says that a fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And I'm telling you, I believe anything that we do for God, we need to do it with everything that we got. Whether it's praying, worshiping, living for Him, being faithful, we need to give it. We need to be fervent about it. We need to be, uh, we need to give it every bit of effort that we got. And I promise you, when you do that, you're entering into a supernatural place. Where things can be let, where every weight of sin that's got you bound will be let go again. When you enter in, when you worship with everything that's within you, when you get on your knees and pray, like your youngest go to die the next day, you'll enter into a place that things happen, amen, where God takes over and does what only He can do. Come on, now stand with your feet to me. Let's enter in and worship Him today, praise the Lord. Let's enter in and get in and worship God, praise the Lord. Let's get in this altar and not worry about not one thing. I know some of us are hungry, but there'll be food later on. Come on, somebody. I know that we got places we got to go, but I promise you ain't none of them more important than entering into the holy place. Can you say amen? Come on up to the 